Sports, a place where many athletes find success. It's likely the final play that matters. End zone, wide open. What a night for Mike Williams. But where there's a winner, there has to be a loser. We came a long way. You hear me? Come here, I love you, bro. Come here. It's one thing to watch the game, but another to analyze it. Let's talk about the numbers. You ready? On that call, there is a clear and obvious man jumping off sides. Passing yo for the Chiefs jumps off sides so clearly. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm talking about when they lose, they only score three points. The Chiefs have 10 points in the fourth quarter. That's not looking good. People are like, well, we don't like to see defense anymore. That's, that's what people want to watch, right? So they can't possibly let the Rams lose the Super Bowl and then let the Chiefs lose the Super Bowl because that's too much against what the fans, the new fans want, right? You two. What's going on, man? Back here to give another video. It's your boy, Numbers Fan J. And you are here because the Super Bowl has ended. You want to see if the Kansas City Chiefs have really been cheated. Were they, you know, just fairly called? I don't even know what you would... Were they rightfully flagged? I don't, I don't know what you would call that. Were they in the wrong, basically? Or, you know, what... Was it just kind of unnecessary? So you're here to see that, but before I let you know, before I deep dive into the Super Bowl flags, before I tell you guys my opinion, before I share all of that good stuff, <clears throat> leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you're new, thank you for your view. Welcome to my channel. I'm here every Monday and or Thursday to talk about NFL football, NBA basketball, and the men's March Madness Tournament, which is currently not being played, of course, because of COVID. But these other two sports are. So we are definitely deep diving into both of those. But let's get into it. So I was 7-6 coming into this game, coming into the Super Bowl. That was my pick record, my correct and my incorrect for this postseason. Actually, I was 7-5. I'm now 7-6. Now I'm 7-6 because I got it wrong, you know. But, hey, I got it wrong. I'm a Chargers fan, so, you know, I, I don't have no problem getting this one wrong. <laughs> Just wanted to throw that out there for all of y'all who said he's a Chargers fan. You know, that's why he made this video saying the Chiefs cheated and won the Super Bowl last year. Well, now I'm here saying the Chiefs got cheated. So, what's up now? What's up now? I told y'all that I was going to be back at the same similar, if something similar Golly, I can't even get it out. If something similar happened <laughs> this year. So I'm back. But anyway, I just want to see fair football, y'all. That's all I want to see. But let's get into it. <clears throat> so the NFL record for first downs via penalty coming into this game was six. And that's for the entire game. That's the NFL record. The NFL record for penalty yardage and a half. Coming into the game, it's 91 yards, and that was recorded in Super Bowl V. That was Super Bowl 55 we just watched. God, I don't know if you knew, but <laughs> that's kind of crazy. But Kansas City, in the first half, had eight penalties for 95 yards. Six of those penalties went for first down. Now, was every penalty warranted? Did they go by the rule book? We're going to get into that. Were they ticky tag calls? We're going to get into that. Were they correct call? We're going to get into that as well. So, let's get it. There were five game-changing flags in under 15 minutes in this football game. Now, before I tell y'all about these flags, I just want to say, the NFL referees and the flag throwing does not decide the outcome of football games, but it does influence it. It changes not only the player's mindset, but it also changes the coach's mindset. And it also even changes the referee's mindset because not every referee is throwing flags. 
but they are coming together to discuss these flags, to discuss the rules, to discuss, you know, what's clear and obvious. Do they think that the flag should remain? All of this stuff. So it affects everybody in the atmosphere, including the fans that want to see a fair game. But let's get into it, man. So number one, this flag was thrown in the second quarter, 14 minutes and 46 seconds left in the in the half. The score was three to seven. The Buccaneers were up. This is unnecessary reference. Now I think that this is a ticky tack call, and no flag was warranted here. And we're gonna tell you why. Here's the rule. We're gonna put the rule up here for you. So look at the rule. Pause it here if you want to read the whole thing, you know. But I'm gonna keep talking. So I just want to highlight this. And this is at the very end of the rule. This is after they discuss what the rule is and all of that. This quote is from the end of the rule. If in doubt about a roughness call, the official should always call unnecessary roughness. That's a load of crap. <laughs> Basically, they're taking this rule and saying, all right, it's now a judgment call. So you have an opportunity to say, all right, guys, y'all need to relax. All right, guys, don't chill out. Next time, I'm going to have to throw a flag on that. So they don't have to call it if it's not clear and obvious breaking these rules, which, as you can see in this visual, visual evidence I've given to you, there's no punches being thrown. There's nobody getting hit late. There's a shove. There's a shove in response to another shove, and there's a flag. Are we we're throwing unnecessary roughness flags for shoves in the Super Bowl? Are we serious? That's ticky tack, man. It's ticky tack. Didn't have to be thrown there, but it was. Flag number two. Actually, we gotta explain why flag number one influenced the game. So, flag number one turned a three-yard pass on third down into a goal line stand. It, the Buccaneers weren't even in position to score. But it turned into a first down and it gave them a chance to score, which the Chiefs defense, this is the part where I say that the flags don't determine the game, they influence it. So it turned from a three yard pass into a goal line stand. Very big call. So flag number two. This flag took place with seven minutes and 55 seconds on the clock. This is three to seven. The score still three to seven Buccaneers. This flag took an interception and gave the ball back to Tampa Bay at the 27 yard line of the Chiefs. So they're already in scoring range. Uh, this was the correct call. This was a self inflicted wound by the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Wasn't pass interference because he wasn't holding them when the ball came out, but he was holding them. Holding the rule holding is pretty much self explanatory. He's holding the player from running his routes, from getting open, from getting, you know, getting separation. This was the correct call. Flag number three. This flag took place in the second quarter, six minutes and 15 seconds left in the half. This was the correct call. This was offsides. Another self-inflicted wound by the Kansas City defense. So two correct calls that did mean something. They did. They meant something. First call, you know, call number two, took a possession away from that defense that just created an, a turnover, which would have been huge. And this flag, took points off the board from three points to possibly, you know, seven points. So this was the correct call. This did take the score from three to 10 to three to 14, essentially what well, gave them a chance. You know what I'm saying? So flag number four, this flag took place with 24 seconds left in, ha in the half, pass interference. This ball was uncatchable. I'm telling y'all right now, I don't care. This ball was uncatchable. And there was no contact when the ball was in the air. That, like, come on, bro. There's no holding. There's no contact when the ball is in the air. Because Mike Evans falls right after the DB falls, in real life time, it looks like the DB pulled him down. You go to the replay, DB does touch. 
Maybe he taps his foot a little bit, but the DB's on the ground. And the ball is way in front of Mike Evans. He's not stretching out to make that. I mean, good God. <laughs> Are we calling that? Like, that's not... By the rules, that ball is uncatchable. Now, the problem with this is the rules never defines what's an uncatchable ball. And that's the, the real problem with that rule. Now, flag number five. 13 seconds left in the half. Chiefs are trying to hold again. Not literally, but you know, <laughs> they're trying to make sure that the Buccaneers don't score like they did against Green Bay. Pass interference. There is visible contact. I will say that right now. There is visible contact on this replay. But, again, the ball is uncatchable. Which goes back one more time. Does the rule define an uncatchable pass? It does not. So it really, it sounds more like there's a problem with the rule and not the actual officiating there because, again, we're looking at judgment calls, man. These have to be fixed. These two in particular, very annoying. But it was holding at the very least. The very least, this play was defensive holding five-yard penalty first and goal. There was a penalty there. But it was not a spot foul to put this Buccaneers team on the one-yard line. That's not what it was. So I disagree with that, that call as well. That went from 6-14 to 14 to 6-21. to 21, So that's a huge call as well. Now I want y'all to listen to this quote from the commentator about how things go down in Tampa before halftime. Crazy things happen right before the half in Super Bowls in Tampa. You remember in 08, last play of the half, James Harrison with the interception. And Al Michaels with a great call. Now, before I go, I just want to give y'all the cold hard facts. I've given you my theory, you know, the calls that I think were incorrect, the calls that I think were correct. Call that I thought that was kind of, you know, on the edge. Didn't really have to call that. But I'm going to give you the facts right now. So, number one, the Buccaneers had three sacks. An endless pressure without blitzing on two backup tackles. We talked about this. We keyed on this in our last video before the Super Bowl. This was one of our keys. Another key was extra points are greater than field goals. Although one point is not greater than three points, you want to score extra points because they follow the six. <laughs> uh, against this Kansas City team, you have to score touchdowns, not field goals. The Buccaneers had four extra points and one field goal. So they did that correctly as well. Another key, we talked about Tyreek Hill. Had 269 yards and three touchdowns in their first meeting. In this game, he had seven catches for 73 yards. No touchdowns, no big plays, and he even dropped a touchdown. So they keyed on that as well. Here's a plus one for you. We talked about the, the Chiefs needing to hold the Buccaneers under 24 points because in the regular season when they were under 24 points, they didn't win a single game. The Buccaneers exceeded 24 points. <laughs> so that's a plus one. And a plus two. Just for kicks, Antonio Brown scored a touchdown. Former Steelers scores a touchdown before a half. You remember in the Cardinals and Steelers Super Bowl, Harrison runs back a 100-yard pick six as time expires in the half. So just something to think about there. Just, you know, a little nugget for you. <laughs> but thank y'all for watching, man. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you're new, thank you for your view. I appreciate you. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that the Chiefs caught karma here <clears throat> from the last Super Bowl? Do you think that these flags were all correct? Do you think that they were all incorrect? Do you agree with what I said? Let me know. It's your boy, Jay. We out of here.